Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film an April wrap up. So I don't normally film wrap up videos, but I have fallen so far behind in doing my booktube filming that I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to talk about all the books that I read in April and I'm going to try to be really brief. Some of them I can't talk about because they're booktube prize books and some of them I've already reviewed in other places and so I'll but I'll go through the whole list of everything I read and tell you where you can hear more about those books should you care uh, or be interested. So the very first thing that I completed in the month of April was this uh, novel Pod by Laleen Paul and this is a book that's been shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I buddy read it with Britta Bowler. I believed I talked about it briefly in a vlog earlier on um, at some point at the end of March maybe. This is a story of a dolphin named Ia and she is in a pod of spinner dolphins and she uh, because of circumstances that I'm not going to go into has to leave her family's home and travel by herself um, outside of the area that she knows and lives in and it's all about her the things that she experiences as she leaves uh, her family group, her family pod. Now, Ia is not the only animal that we encounter in this book. There's also a whale. We, we get a perspective of a whale. We get a perspective of another um, dolphin who is on his own, who has been trained by the military, but is now uh, in the wild on his own. There's a fish that's a main character. There's several different characters, so don't think that there's only one perspective in this novel because there's multiple perspectives. Um, and it's just a wonderful story that basically tells what it's like to experience life in the ocean right now um, in terms of the changes that are happening due to human pollution, whether that be sound pollution, chemical pollution, plastic pollution, actual physical harm to animals from ship strikes and other uh, ways that humans kill animals. And so these, of course, these creatures have no idea what's causing all this to happen and they're just living their lives. And it's how their lives are changed due to these outside inputs that they have no idea why these things are happening. I will say this is a very um, violent book in places. There's a lot of difficult uh, things that happen in here. It's very dark. Um, I had difficulty with uh, the harm to animals that happens in here as well as sexual violence. So just be aware that that's in here. But overall, I love the message and the themes in this book um, and the characters were fantastic. And I just thought it was a really great story. So that was the first thing I finished in April. I then finished an audiobook of uh, a biography of William Howard Taft by... Jeffrey Rosen, and that was for my presidential reading challenge. Um, it was a short audiobook, but I had read previous books about William Howard Taft, and so I have completed that portion of the president's reading challenge by completing that audiobook. I then read The Song of the Cell by Siddhartha Mukherjee. I read that for the Booktube Prize, so I can't go into that one. Um, and then I read I'm Glad My Mom Died uh, as a audiobook, again, for the Booktube Prize. Um, that is by Jeanette McCurdy, and it's a memoir. And then I read Did You Hear Mammy Died, which is by Seamus O'Reilly, another memoir for the Booktube Prize. So that was three Booktube Prize books in a row. And I'm sorry I'm looking off to the side because my list is over here. Uh, the next book I finished was Birdsplaining by Jasmine Donahue. And that was a book that I had started in March for Dowithon by a Welsh author um, and then finished in April. And it's a collection of essays written by Donahue about her experience of um, being in nature, particularly bird watching uh, as a woman. There's a lot of intersection of feminism and what it means to be a woman in today's world with her thoughts and ruminations about the natural world, particularly as it relates to birds. Some really fascinating uh, topics discussed in that essay collection, and I really enjoyed it. It's also pretty short. I think it's only like 150 pages. So if you're looking for a t book that's written by a Welsh author and you like uh, nature writing in essay form, I would highly recommend Birdsplaining. The next thing I completed was another book off my shelves, and I've talked about this one multiple times now, so I won't go into it much here, but this is The Birds and Other Stories by Daphne du Maurier. This is a short story collection, very atmospheric and gothic. Um, this was published right after World War II, I think in the early 1950s. 
does seem to have quite a bit of um, influence from World War II, but also um, lots of stuff about animals in here. As the titular story, you will know from the Alfred um, Hitchcock movie. Uh, really great, creepy and atmospheric. If you're looking for um, that sort of thing in short story form, I definitely recommend this collection. The next thing I completed was a book for Trans Girl April, and that was Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. And this is about a young teenage boy who is trying to navigate um, high school and friendships and romantic entanglements, all the while trying to figure out how to, you know, what he wants to do after high school, you know, where he wants to go to college and all that kind of stuff. Layered on top of all that normal teenage stuff, is the fact that he is trans and he has to deal with a lot of discrimination and prejudice and um, potential violence because of his identity. Uh, his dad is trying really hard to accept the situation as it stands, but he makes mistakes and those mistakes are acknowledged. Um, it was a good story uh, and I think that it is a story that needs to be told and be out there and I'm glad that it's out there for people but the teenage angst <laughs> in this book really did bother me in the beginning. I'm glad that I stuck with it because it ended up being a really great story. I listened to it on audiobook and I think that that is a really excellent way to listen to YA contemporary books in particular um, and I thought that the the ideas that um the the things that Felix goes through were um very realistically portrayed I felt without you know without living that um identity myself it felt very real to me uh and I also particularly liked uh the Felix is an artist and he's um, going through this, this summer uh, enrichment program and everybody's doing different kinds of arts but the descriptions of the different art uh, creative projects and things that the kids are involved in I thought that was particularly excellent and an, a nice addition to this story and really added another dimension and another level of meaning to what was being talked about so that was great. The next thing I finished was another book two prize book, and that was Blood in Ruins by Richard Overy. This is nonfiction about World War II. It's actually a huge uh, history of from like the 1930s all the way up to like post World War II. So it's very definitive. Um, so that was the next one I finished. I read that as a hardcover from the library. The next uh, thing I finished was Ivan the Terrible by Henri Troyat, and this is uh, translated from the French by Joan Pinkham. This is a book that I read for People April, uh, biography of Ivan the Terrible, obviously Ivan the Terrible being um, the Tsar of Russia in the 1500s. I buddy read this with Sean the Book Maniac. It's a very short biography. It's only 250 pages, which is great because Ivan is certainly terrible um, and also probably um, mentally ill, uh, definitely unstable, very violent. The horrible tortures and sadistic treatment that he hands out to not only his subjects, but his family members, the people of his court, uh, his wives, like he is not a good person. Um, and he justifies everything that he does through religion because he is the czar and so therefore he is the appointed by God leader of Russia um, and it's, so it's very disturbing and also weirdly enough gets very repetitive and almost boring uh, because like at some point your brain just switches off from all the terrible horrible violent um, things that he's doing. I mean it's very is described a lot the different tortures that he puts people through and so at some point your brain just like just can't like input that anymore and you're just sort of like oh yeah here goes Ivan again doing something terrible to someone but he's just very um he was just horrible <laughs> to people and but I am glad that I read this because it does give a really good foundation for where we are in current day Russia and why the Russian populace seems to accept these autocratic and um, uh, dictatorship type 
governments like they have since the 1500s. It just keeps happening over and over. Um, and this does provide a little bit of insight into that. And also the glimpse into the 1500s, which is pretty fascinating. The, the interactions that Ivan has with other national leaders, particularly the Queen of England at the time, is quite humorous. There's also this exchange of letters that he has with one of his, um, one of his aristocratic, you know, higher up lords, like flees Russia and goes to Poland and becomes a, a right hand man to the King of Poland. And they have this, this letter correspondence over, over a course of years where they're just like, basically just going over and over and over the same ground of insulting each other, like for years. It's quite amusing anyway. And I am really glad that I read this and I wish that more biographies would be as succinct as this one is. Then I read uh, The Golden House by Salman Rushdie. And this was a buddy read with Joe Smith. And um, I'm really glad that she suggested that we had wanted to read a Salman Rushdie book. And this was one of the ones that she had not yet read. And because she's read a lot of Salman Rushdie and I've read none of his fiction until I read this one. And I'm really glad we picked this one up. It is a wild ride. So it's the story of Nero Golden, who is an immigrant to the United States. He comes with his three adult sons to this neighborhood in um, called the Gardens in New York City. And they buy this humongous big house and proceed to live this very lavish lifestyle. And um, our narrator of the story is a man named Rene, and he is a resident of this neighborhood. And he is also a film student and is, he decides that he, he's, he's casting around, he's trying to figure out, um, he wants to write a screenplay and he needs a topic. And so he decides he's gonna write a screenplay about this family, this golden family, this Nero Golden, who is a larger than life character and nobody really knows where they came from and they don't know where the mom is and they don't know where the money's come from. And so there's like all the shady sort of, you know, are they, is it criminal activity or is he just like a wealthy businessman who's like left, you know, a bad situation in his home country because you don't know what country he comes from at first. And so like over the course of this novel, you find out what the story is behind Nero Golden and his three sons. And it is, and the thing that makes it crazy is this all this stuff that happens and it's just very compulsively readable. And you don't know how much of it is Renee making it up for his screenplay and how much of it is the actual story of this family. Um, and, you know, like, I do think that um, Rushdie like puts everything in here. Like he throws every kind of topic that you can imagine in a modern novel being in here. There's politics, there's the Trump election, there's, um, you know, gender issues, there's uh, race issues, <laughs> there's social justice things, like everything is in this novel. Um, but he writes it with a lot of humor, particularly the stuff about the, um, the election campaign of Trump versus Hillary. He like describes Trump as the Joker and um, Hillary as Batwoman. <laughs> and it's, it's just really, it's really amusing. Um, it does get a little madcap at times and um, you, it's almost exhausting how much is in this novel, but I really enjoyed it. And Joe and I had a great time discussing it. Um, and I think for, if you're new to Rushdie like I am, this was a great place to start because there's no magical realism. There's none of that stuff that he's known for. And I can understand if that's what you're looking for from Rushdie, you'd be disappointed with the golden house because that's not what it is. And I do feel that Rushdie like puts himself too much in this novel. Like it's definitely his political opinions that are coming through. And um, there's certain characteristics of Nero and Renee that you're like, mm, that might be a little bit rusty as well. So, you know, whatever. I just had a really good time reading this book and I'm really glad that Joe and I read it together. Uh, and then the next thing I read was another book for Trans Girl April and that was Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that or not right or not. This is a science fiction novel. I listened to it on audiobook. Um, and the reason why I picked it up was because I heard it described as a cross between um, a Becky Chambers novel and um, 
I don't remember what the other thing was that it was supposedly crossed with, but it, Becky Chambers is one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, science fiction authors. This book is also quirky. Um, it's about a uh, young um, trans girl who is a violent prodigy, um, who is found by a violin teacher who wants to teach this young person um, and and have them become a famous violinist. And it's also about a group of aliens who have come to Earth to escape intergalactic war and who are currently running a donut shop in California. And um, in the back of the donut shop are also building a Stargate. <laughs> And so these people all come together and it's found family and it's, you know, about what you really want out of your life and who you support and how you support them. And all that stuff is delightful, but it is not kind and gentle. Like do not go into this book thinking you're just going to get a lovely Becky Chambers style found family, kind and gentle kind of read because you're not. There is a lot of this, this young trans girl I can't remember anybody's name right now off the top of my head. Um, she experiences violence and sexual assault and people being absolutely 100% horrible to her all the time. She's very, um, she has a lot of things that she's dealing with. She uh, is, has never been supported in her identity. She uh, feels very unlovable and um, unattractive and she's dealing with all of that and people are continually continuing to be mean to her so even when people in her group here are are being supportive and nice it's very hard for her to trust them and to be open to that so just be aware that there is a lot of trauma and a lot of really awful things that happen to her um, so don't go into this novel thinking you're just going to get fun and fluffy because you're not. Um, but in the end, I really did like the story. I thought it, um, you know, it, it does have a happy ending, of course. And I just love a found family storyline. I've really been into those this year. And so I'm really glad I picked that one up. And um, it was it was a fun, it ended up being a fun and sort of a heartwarming tale, even though it had some real um, awful moments in it. And then the last thing that I completed in the month of April was my book naturalist book club pick. And that was Call of the Reed Warbler by Charles Massey. I have a full standalone review for this book um, at, from the end of April. If you're interested in finding out more about this one, please go check that out. This was excellent book about uh, regenerative agriculture um, written by an Australian author. So if you're looking for a nonfiction for Aussie April next year, this one would fit the bill. So that's it. Those are the books that I read in the month of April. Um, I hope that you're all doing well and finding some great books to read and I will talk to you later.